Welcome everybody. I'm Jan and I'm yeah, talking about Steppers in Pinball today. And I got one here. And I got nice MPF stickers. Even the stepper has one. Um, and it also works, I think. Let's, let's demonstrate that for a bit. No, it doesn't work because I didn't plug it in. That. It works better if you turn it on, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> okay. And, oop, it's working. Moment. And, yeah, awesome. That is how it looks and sounds if it moves. Yeah. So, um, yeah, welcome everybody. I'm Jan, as, as I told, <laughs> and I will just start with like my my slides here. Mm, and I will just put this. So, um, yeah, today uh, we are talking about steppers in pinball. And yeah, I just quickly showed you my, my setup here. Uh, I got two controllers set up. We can try them both. And um, yeah, then we can, can play a little bit with those later. So I prepared a small agenda. And as promised, what are steppers? Um, what do I use them for? And how do they work? That's the next point. And then how do I connect steppers? Um, because those are a little bit different electrically than, than servos or like or, or coils. Um, and yeah, I will just show you how, how they work and how you usually connect them because there are multiple ways. Um, but um, yeah, we we will we will go into that, and then I will show my demo. Um, I will also show you how this works in MPF, and we can move the stepper a little bit, and I can show some yeah some features of this nice stepper controller I got. So what are steppers? In general, steppers are very precise motors. So they can move to really in a precise location. So for example, this is also a stepper motor from, I don't know where it came from. I think maybe a printer or something. Um, so they are really precise. So they got, if you, if you, you turn them, you feel that there are small steps. Um, and that's basically when um, where it can move and hold. So what it does, it can basically go from step to step, uh, really, really tiny here, usually like around 200 steps uh, if you turn it once. In most motors, that's 200 steps, um, at least those hobby motors. And then there can be also like half steps and quarter steps and 16 steps and 32 steps. So it can even have sub steps. And if you multiply like 200 by 32, that's like 640 steps. That's a lot of steps. And that's just one resolution of this motor, right? So that's, and it can turn, it can go continuously, and it can actually repeat the positions. And it can repeat them real, really, really accurately. So like if it goes to a certain position, it can come back to the same position, and that's really exactly the same position. So that's uh, that's really great for certain applications where this is important. Um, and for that re reason, they're usually used in all this um, automation and 
yeah, all those like factories that are like you know, in a 3D, 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 3D printer where it's important to like get like a reliable position and basically get the same position every time. And that's a way you can use them. They got high torque, especially if they are not moving. So they can keep a position really, really, really strong. So they they can fight you for, for really large forces. And um, even when they're moving, they're quite strong. One issue which, which you got is if you got too much load on it, so like physical load, and if they start to skip steps, uh, they won't notice. So even the, the controller won't notice that it skipped steps. So that's important to know. So you always have to make sure that your stepper is strong enough to keep the position where it's in. Um, and they are, I mean, they are relatively slow. So like, I mean, if you know a 3D printer, they can go quick, but um, they are not super quick. And um, that's basically, yeah, this is the result of, of, of moving in those tiny, exact high torque steps. Uh, so they are probably fast enough for most pinball applications, but they are not generally high speed motors. Um, you can use them, for example, for, for any toys um, which you want to move freely. Um, if even if it's hit by a ball, if it's strong enough, it will keep like the current position, or you can de um, de energize the stepper and then it will move freely. So this one is not energized here. I can freely move it, for example. But if it's energized, I usually cannot move it. I will show you later um, how this relates to current and voltage and so on. Um, so that's what you can do with that. So any toy you want to move, or if you basically have like a linear actor somewhere and you want to move it, it's usually a good idea to use something like a stepper because it, it only needs to know the position once. So you, for example, you've got a home switch somewhere and you drive the stepper to the home switch or the, the, the toy, and then it knows this, this position. And from there, it basically counts 500 steps to the left and then 100 back and now it knows that it's at a certain position and it can go to any position freely. You do not need additional uh, switches. So that's the strength of, of steppers, basically. Um, and technically, this is how they work. So um, you got like typically steppers with either four lungs or, or six. This one, for example, has like, has like six. And this is basically one of the middle steppers. So um, usually, like they often are either two or yeah, four or six. There are also eight, and there's even more stuff. Um, and this works by like you got two coils technically, right? That's that's a coil here between A and C and B and D. That's a coil, and those can be magnetized by the driver. And this way, it can and direct the magnetic field in certain directions. And inside, basically, the motor also has like a, a magnet, and it can then turn the magnet into certain positions. And it can even like, it can, it can for example, in the, in the first case, it can have the horizontal and the vertical um, positions, but it can also have like half the position if both are active. And as I told you earlier, it can also do like one half a f a quarter step or eighth or sixteenth or thirty-twoth steps, so it can do really small sub-steps. Um, and this is electronically driven uh, using like current, like a current-driven circuit. And that's um, that's important because current more or less is like you got more current, you got more magnetic field. And if you control it by the current, you can have like an initial high voltage and then it drops down and it keeps like a more or less constant magnetic field. Um, everybody knows in pinball that like those pulse times, they're really, yeah, I mean, they're not linear and so on. And that's, that's the reason because there's magnetic stuff going on, which is like a little bit tricky to calculate and so on. And if you do it current driven, like what is usually done in those motors, you won't have those problems. You can very directly 
control how strong this is. And I will show you in a minute. You could theoretically do that in any coil and pinball, but the controllers would be a little bit more expensive in that case. Um, so yeah, what you will end up is either six lungs or four. Um, my other stepper, um, yeah, I cannot disconnect it now. Um, I can show you in a, for a minute. So this one here, that's also like, it has six lungs here. And but this cable which came with it only only connects four of them because that's usually what what is done in pinball and in 3d printers and you can also see that i only connected four of them here and so this is basically an an, an anima um, 17 motor that's a very typical motor which is used in all those 3d printers they are cheap like 10 15 20 bucks and uh, super powerful um very robust motors. Um, yeah, and so yeah, that's just to to understand how this why, why they got different numbers of lungs, and um, just you have to understand that the the second and the, so the left and the middle one they can be used basically interchangeably. So in the case of the middle one, you can just skip the middle lung. So the A, A uh, bracket or an A, what's it called, and B bracket, and you can basically skip the middle one, and then you've got essentially the same as the left one. And <clears throat> that's exactly what I did here. For example, I even cut those two, which are not used then. So then this motor works basically exactly. The stepper works exactly the same as the other one. Um. So. Uh, in general, they are current controlled, and you definitely want to current control them. You can voltage control them, so just put on voltage, but that's usually not a good idea, and they will be weak. So my stepper here, it's rated for like uh, I think 1.8 volts. Yeah, it's rated for 1.8 volts. So that sounds really low, and the reason is like I can connect it to 1.8 volts, and it will not burn. If, if I directly connect it to anything else, it will burn. And um, my driver is currently running at 12 volts, and it's current controlling this the stepper to enforce that it has a certain torque and a certain power. So it's not unusual. It's very likely and normal that your supply voltage is higher than the voltage on your stepper. That's just that's not a problem. Usually. That's a red sign. In steppers, it's normal for stepper controllers. Um, yeah, and like there's no feedback. So there's, there's, not, there's no way to know where the stepper is unless you add, for example, a switch. Um, that's basically what you need to understand here. And now we're becoming a little bit more practical. So how do I connect it? Um, this is like the controller I got. That's the Pololu TIC. Controller, um, but I also got like the PD LED from Multimorphic. I also connected that one. I will show this later. It's a little bit more complicated to come to connect. And um, this one is like a 20 bucks uh, controller, um, and it has like a lot of options. But we are only using the USB option here. So this one is connected via USB, and on the right you see that. There is like the stepper with the same picture as I showed before, and that's connected there. So I connected the four wires there, and I put 12 volts to it. So like this one is four and a half volts to 35. So usually, probably want to use like 12 or 24 if you got that in your machine. But most people will have like 12 and then 48, and that's not working, or the controller will stop working if you connect it. Um, and it has like a lot more inputs and outputs around here, which are not, which you do not have to use. So like there's an error output, there's a reset output, and there's like an I squared C input, there's a serial input, there's like five volt output. So you could use this controller to supply something with five volts. And on the top, you can also like directly step the controller. 
if you would like a step signal, but that's also not something you, you want to use. We will later use the pins on the left also with SCL, SDA, BX, RX, and RC, um, because we can use those as, in, as inputs in MPF. I just added this today because I thought it's cool. <laughs> and you can use this as, as home switch. And, but generally, just connect your stepper on the left, connect USB, connect power. And that's all you need to get this thing working. And if you look at my setup here, um, that's roughly what I did. Shadows hit. So here you got the stepper, here you got power, USB, and there I connected some switches. And which are not ordinarily here on this diagram, which is why I removed that from the diagram. And now there's just one remaining question. How do I know which wire to connect where? And that's a little bit tricky, actually. So there's like color coding um, for those, for like there's one for four, wire, four leads, for six leads, for eight leads, and so on. And always, also depends on your controller. So most controllers, like this one, they are made for four leads. If you got eight leads, then you have two options. Either you could always connect two in parallel, or you um, either tap in parallel, or you put them serially, right serially. So, but that's something, if you got special, special steppers, check the manual. If you got like a four lead one, this is usually what it is. Mine is actually the first one, for example. Um, but that's the typical color coding. Um, if you got six, um, just skip the middle one, as I explained earlier. There's also like a table for six leads. If you don't know, for example, on this one, because this this colors here, they are really odd. They are like, um, I don't know, brown, black, red, red, yellow, orange. So it's really odd. And um, what you can do is like use use a multimeter, um, like this one, and just measure like the the um, the resistance, and like on the six ones, for example. And there will be three ones together always connected, connected together, and there will be like 50 ohms between two and 50 ohms between the other two, and then 100 ohms between those. So like that's basically twice. The, the amount and you need those where the the uh, resistance is the largest and then leave the other one out and then connect those that that's basically how you can find it out and that's also how i did on this one because yeah well it came from some printer or something or maybe also from some scanner and and uh, i didn't find the data sheet for it so uh yeah that, that also worked so my tool of the week a multimeter you can use it for all kinds of stuff you measure like the the current on stuff like how much current is it actually using it's useful on the pd led because it's like like it's a potentiometer to control it i can show that later you can use it to to verify any voltages you can measure resistance and you can yeah like generally check if it's something is connected it's really useful in pinball so like uh, if you're building a pinball, you probably have one, and if not, get get a good one. Uh, also, you can use the pins here to remove your Molex uh, crimp headers, so like the pins on certain Molex crimps. That's also something which I often do with uh, multimeter pins. Um, yeah, so. That's it from the theoretical part, and now we go to the practical part. Um, so, if you've got any questions, um, as usual, feel free to ask. You can ask now, you can ask later. Uh, we can uh, try stuff anytime you want. Um, and I would start with that now. Maybe. Um, it's better, a lot better. So what I did here is the following. I got this nice stepper, um, which is the standard NMIA stepper, and I connected it to this Pololu Maestro controller. And uh, sorry, Pololu TIC 
controller. And also I connected some inputs on um, some of the GPIO pins. It's like there's one is called RX, the other one TX, which they are they're used for serial, but you can reconfigure them and then they can be used as inputs in MPF um, since today because I added it. And now if we um, if we start MPF, um, let's just do that. I did this earlier. Um, this happens. Uh, it will turn. And the reason is that MPF now tries to find the home position. And um, I added the left switch here as home switch. Um, and now if I press it, it's the right, no, the right one. Check. And now it's homed. So the other two are basically the, the limit switches of the left and the right limit switches. That's why I stopped for a second. So the right one, that's the home. Now MPF knows that it's at its home, at the home position. And um, so I can show the lock here. Now it says it's home and it's happy. Pretty small, right? And this is the home switch. Um, yeah, the question was, do you have acceleration control in MPF? Um, yes and no. <laughs> it depends. I mean, um, if the controller supports acceleration, then yes. So, um, for example, like on this controller, MPF can control the acceleration and like have a ramp and so on. And there are certain other controllers which support that too. On like stuff like the PD LED, that's currently not supported. It will just go, and you you will see the the difference later. Now this one is really um, nice, so I can can move it for example to some position. It it starts and it slows before it stops. And it's really nice. So this is really accurate. It's exactly one turn, right? It's that's perfect. So. And even to do it 200 times, it will always be exactly the same position. Um, and that's because, like the this, um, the Polylu tick supports all that stuff, and you can set the deceleration, acceleration, max speed, everything you want in MPF uh, on this controller. And for like other controllers, that's not possible. So like it's not that we um, yeah, that we said like a, 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 yeah, a, a position like on two more ticks and then four more ticks and so on. I guess we could like emulate the ramp and software, right? That that would be possible, but we are currently not doing that. I hope that answers your question. Um, so yeah, that's basically how this works. So I can show you like how this works in code. In, Oh, it's not the right word in config. And in config, it looks like that. You have like a stepper in the stepper section here. And I call it stepper one. And this is the number of the controller. So like the, um, yeah, the serial number of this Pololu tick controller, that's basically the number of the server because each controller has exactly one stepper and that's just a serial number. And then there's basically the, the homing mode. It can be either a switch, that's what I configured now, which I just showed, as a home switch. And this is then handled by MPF. MPF will wait until this switch becomes active and then it knows that this servo is at its home position. That might be useful if it can turn around, for example. And there's also like a hardware homing mode, which is not supported by all controllers again. But uh, on the Pololu Maestro, uh, Pololu Tick, it's supported, so we can also use that if we want. And and then it's handled by this controller, and you can. I mean, the controller can do other stuff. I can show that as well. And uh, let's let's do it. Just moved it. Okay. It didn't shut down properly, but we can force it. So now 
looks exactly the same, but now I got like the limit switch is here and it will now go to the left until it reaches the left limit switch. And press it, bam, and it stops again. And now it's homed and I can do exactly the same as before. It moves, uh, I mean, then it knows the position and it, it can move again. So basically those are the two initial modes. So either it can go against like one of its limit switches or it put in the hardware controller in the Polydo tick, or it can like have a home switch, which is then handled by MPF. And um, there's like a nice control utility um, for, for this controller. So that's basically, uh, you can see it. That's my controller here. And here it shows like the serial number. Um, and like the firmware, it's not the latest one, but uh, yeah, I didn't update it. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, it measures, for example, how high the input voltage is um, and a lot of stuff. And um, so we can do that even the counters here. So, so it's all happy and, uh, and working. And I can also move it here. You cannot see. You can directly like move it here, for example. And so that that works. And you can also like run it in like velocity mode, where basically it runs at a fixed speed, so like ten steps per second or something. So if you want to have a motor which runs at an exact at an exact speed, that's also something which you can implement with a stepper. Um, that's also supported in MPF, but not so really great. <laughs> so if you need it, tell me or tell tell us in the forum, and we will add some more configuration to for that. It's implemented, but like there's not so much of a config interface for that. Another thing for this controller is like you can configure the input pins. That's what I teased out earlier. Like those are those pins here, and um, it's basically a tab for that on advanced settings. And you can, for example, say like, like the TX pin, that's a limit switch forward and RX is a limit switch reverse. And the other two are basically just user input pins here. And I enabled the pull-ups um, so that I do not have to add pull-ups myself. And it can even have like an, be an analog input. So you can measure like, Current there, like between zero and five volts. So, if you need it, that's here. You can even use this like as as an output, um, like user I/O. Then you can enable it and in, in disable it for logic, um, for, for as a logic output. If you need that, that's totally available. You can have, can have a kill switch, which if it's active, it will kill this uh, will kill the stepper. And like as the serial, basically that's also possible, right? So this can be controlled via serial instead of USB, and you obviously want to have this as serial. So that's what you can do here, and it has a lot of stuff. So this is a this is a great controller in my opinion. And and now uh, yeah, now it's working. And if you, for example, if you press, press stop MPF now, you see that it now de-energized the motor here and it also has like two triggers which trigger that. There was this safe start violation basically is like a watchdog. If MPF doesn't tickle the watchdog, it will disable the driver and then MPF also on shutdown tells it, well, turn turn it off so that uh, the servo is no longer energized. And it's like it has a nice UI and so on and I configured those switches. And in NPF, I can now also configure those switches, like is, is it again the serial number minus the pin. So I just, just added that. And if you do that, now we can start NPF again. And if I press the pin, you can even see that low, like those switches are now normal switches in, in NPF. And which you can use like for for anything in NPF you want. So as additional five, which is for free. <laughs> um, but I mean, 
honestly it's like it's it's useful because like if you got some some position switches on your steppers and uh, then you can also use them for any logic in your game for example so um that's why i added those just not just for fun um yes right and then like yeah you can set the home direction okay and then this is basically how you move the, the stepper. So you got like named positions, how they're called, so position zero, and then you can have some event which moves your stepper to that position. And then it's like, that's basically, it's an absolute position, it's not relative. So if I can move, I can move it to 200 and then to zero, then then to 100, and it will always like move to the same position. That's basically what this is. And 200 steps on most steppers like mine, Will be just one time one time around 360 degrees but we can also like do like 400 if you want and it will just turn turn around two times and uh, do that so that's the right button and now mm, now we can try it. The zero position, that's where it already is. It's half turn and back and two times around. And we can turn it also two times back, exactly the same position. And also like one time, half time around, one time around, always exactly the same position. And that's basically the strength of a strapper versus like any other motor. Other motors wouldn't be like able to repeat this position that accurately. And um, one thing to do it, like if it has like some some mechanical load, then it has to have enough torque to do that. And that is something on that controller which you can tune in software. And that's actually a setting here, uh, which I intentionally set to the minimum setting. So that's the current it drives. It drives this motor, and mine mine can be driven like with I think one one thousand eight hundred milliamps. So that's that's a lot, and now I'm re running it at one milliamp. So that's the minimum setting, and I can so so let's so we have this now, and now I can show you that um so, yeah that this I mean it's uh, it's strong. And I can still, I don't know if you can hear it, I can move it with, with like quite some force. I can move it actually. But if I dial this up here, so if I now say, well, let's, let's go with like half an amp and apply the setting. And now I can try that again. And there's simply nothing I can do, to be honest. It won't move anymore. And that's basically the magic. You put in more current, it will get hotter. So just make sure that the server is back for that uh, amperage, amperage. And then it yeah, sounds a little bit different, but uh, it still works exactly the same. And um, it now is just strong. So it's current driven, as I told earlier. So it will now maintain the ma magnetic field at half an amp. And I think this controller can do two, up to 2.5 amps. So 250 milliamps, 250K milliamps, that's, that's a lot. Mm, then you can also like set the, the step mode. You can also set that from MPF, or it. you can also set, set, set it here. This controller can only go down to 1 8 because it's like the smallest controller they got. Um, that will basically give you more steps and are more control over the steps. Um, so you can you can choose basically speed versus um, accuracy. So that's that's what you can do. And here is what uh, uh, Cobra asks: it's like the maximum speed, the maximum acceleration. You can set that here. You can also set that from MPF. So MPF will set it for you uh, to the step. And basically, MBF could set everything here. So that's not it's just a, a UI tool for the Matlab interface we're using. Um, 
So if, if we miss anything that on snow and we we will add it. Theoretically, we could even have like outputs in MPF for for those GPIOs, but to be honest, I don't see so many applications for that. But if you have any, let us know and we can we can add it. Um, so that's basically that's basically what it is. Microsafts gives you a greater holding torque as well. Yeah, that's true. So because like they are smaller, and then it will be like a little bit stronger there, but also it will be like a little bit smaller. Um, uh, you, when I, I missed the meaning when you turned it by hand a few steps, does that ruin the home? Yes. And that's actually one of the weaknesses. So if you if the if it's not strong enough and for some reason um it can it, it's not strong enough to hold basically the steps, it, it skips steps, then um it will lose its position. And that's a general weakness, so just make sure that it's strong enough. And um, if a ball knocks a few steps off, yeah, then then it will be constantly, or very permanently off. And you can home it again, sure. That would be one thing you could do. Um, and like this step also has something like, um, like limit switches in hardware. So now if I can, for example, those two are my limit switches. So this is the left limit switch here. And if I move it somewhere, and I move it to the left, right? I don't know which limit it is, to be honest. So now it stops because I pressed the limit switch. Because I, now, now it thinks it's, it ran against the limit. If I release it, it will continue. <laughs> but we could, we could handle that. Currently, we are not handling, but but we could, and that's also one of the reasons why I added like the those switches as switches in MPF, because then you can, oh, we can have like some logic to fix positions based on switches if we want. Because currently it will only home it once in the beginning, and then it will not uh, readjust the position, at least not automatically. I think you can you can trigger homing during runtime also. Um, but it's not doing it on its own basically, so there's not like a self-healing mode yet, like we got on on other devices somewhere. So, but but if you got like use cases for that, let let, let me know, and uh, we can totally add that. That would be possible. Mm, yeah, one thing which is really really important here: never ever disconnect the stepper while power is on like it's i mean we always say that and also we say that on coils and so on and they are like it's not a good idea but usually it goes goes well but that's not true on steppers so like as i told you that's current driven so like if the resistance drops it will just increase the voltage until there's enough current and so if i would just remove the header here there's a high likelihood that either the Stepper motor or the controller would burn in in this process. So it's really important not to do that. It's just um, it's just a bad idea. Just don't do it. Um, yeah, that's important here. Um, yeah. So what else do I have? I, I also like um, connected like another board which you're seeing on the top now. And that's like the PD LED board, um, and that's this one here with a P3 rock. Mm. And uh, let's give it down. This uh, I'm in the way. It's just standard board, and uh, basically the PD LED that's connected to the P3 rock here. And it can drive, I think, two steppers. Um, okay. um, yes, two steppers. It can drive two steppers. And I connected basically stepper zero here, and it's basically those three pins. And you need you need at least two of those. 
So one is like the direction and the other one is like the, the step pulse. And the third one is basically a pause pin which disables the driver for, or it will prevent the driver from moving. And this is basically only like logic level. So this is, this board is usually used for like driving LEDs and they added stuff like servos where they just generate like a logic signal for servos and for serial LEDs it's the same. Unfortunately for steppers you need like actually a driver to drive those and that's this one so you can uh, buy those drivers. There are a few different PCBs like this one they are like two or three bucks per piece usually like 10 bucks for three or four or five drivers um, and that's basically a, a stepper driver and it connects to the, P, the PD LED and it also connects to the stepper here so this is basically another stepper cable for my stepper um, I had to connect this breadboard here because I needed to connect two pins to one of, on the board um, but that's also like there are a few options on if depending on if you want the stepper to stay active when it doesn't move or not. So I, I tried, I, I played a little bit with this earlier. And now I would just disconnect power once because I don't want to burn it while you're watching. So now it's down. And now I will just use this stepper here, disconnect it from here and connect it to this nice driver here. Mm. And we will have it over here. And now we will turn it on again and you will see that it's fully working. It did some initial noises, but I don't know why it does that, but probably because the board is booting. And now it's homing, so the defaults are different here. Um, we can use the same homing switches again. So I basically connected the same homing switches from the other controller MP because MPF doesn't care if those switches are on the P3 rock or like on an OPP board, which you also connected, or on this uh, Volodo um, TIC controller. So my home switch is over there. And now it's homed. And you probably notice that this is sounding differently and it also moves differently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't accelerate and decelerate, for example. So that's more like it's very direct uh, driven, for example. And it's also like a lot faster. That's something you can tune in the, in the settings of the. LED. So this is basically like this controller here. And this driver here is driven like with a PWM signal. Like it just, get, just gets pulses from the PD LED and, and that translates into steps on the stepper. So MPF technically also supports like that you use like a logic level output and MPF will generate the pulses, but this will be usually very, very slow on most outputs. Like if you do it on a Raspberry Pi, that actually works because the Raspberry Pi has really, really fast outputs for MPF. But most normal driver boards, like also like the, P, um, the P, P3 Rock, they drive the outputs at like one kilohertz or something. So the maximum output changes you can get is like half the this update frequency. So you would only get 500 hertz update rate here. And even that would be probably not usable. So you can probably use like 100 hertz. And then you can also use this controller like on a normal output, for example, on a Raspberry Pi or any GPIO. If you just wanted to drive a stepper for cheap and it doesn't have to be super accurate, and then it will be accurate, but not super fast. That would be an option which is really, really cheap. Um, but it, like if you got the PD LED, as you can see, that's that's like it's not like it's not made for steppers. As you can see, that actually it's not so. I mean, the settings are probably not correct for the stepper because it's as you can see, 
I go back and forth and it loses steps. So this is probably too fast for the stepper or the current is too low. I don't know. Uh, on this controllers, it's actually that you have a potentiometer. It's this small thing here where you can control the current for the stepper. And um, that's basically dialing, dialing it in. And then I recommend like something like a potentiometer to actually measure the current so that you're not going over the current of your stepper motor. Um, and that looks like this. So if you want to use it, again here you have to put the controller into your stepper controller section. And then you can configure the stepper. It looks like this um, on the P3 rock. And the number is like four is the ID of my PD LED, and zero is like the first um, is the this the first port on it. It's called I don't know. It's like the stepper zero, right? Um, and there can be also like one. That would be the other one. Um, yeah, for the P3 rock, there's no hardware homing, so you have to use a switch. You use the same switch like on the other um, stepper, and yeah, then it works the same like the other one. Um, but you can like not change acceleration and so on. To enable it, you have to like tell the PD LED to to use that certain pin as stepper, and that's by configuring um, the PD LED board section in your P rock section. And that's basically the same with servos and so on. And hey, how Chris? How are you, Chris? <laughs> I'm fine. Thanks for joining in. The nice smiley with emoji. <laughs> Sweet. Um, yeah. So that's awesome. So yeah, and here you can also like configure the speed somehow. Um, I say somehow because I saw it in the documentation. Um, I showed this in the earlier stream. So if you want to know which pins are what, I just I recommend like I really recommend the documentation for Multimorphic. Um, and there's basically the header J8, and that's like the multi-functional header. It can do all kinds of stuff. It can do like servo steppers, serial LEDs, or you can have like one boring normal LED. You decide, and you can decide for all of those pins. So there are like multiple options. So if you use a stepper, you will lose usually three pins here. So this one, this one, and this one. So I have crank a 12, 13, 14. Um, so if you just if you want to know how to connect it, that's that's where you would look that up. Um, and we got like the. Let me check the documentation. Oh, we got documentation for this kind of stuff. Um, and that's the PD LED boards, which. Ah, come on. Which uh, looks like this. So um, yeah, it's all the stuff you can configure here, and that's also like a stepper speed section. Ah, here you see what it does. The clock cycles for stepper half step at thirty two megahertz. Um, and I guess more is like it's slower. So we can now go in here and just increase this value. Let's Let's like put it the tenfold value in there, just to see if it's uh, if it's will become reliable with that. And we just restart it and see what happens. Okay, it makes noises. <laughs> Doesn't move at all, so that's probably not good. Let's just double it and let's see what it does if it becomes just. It definitely became slower, and we will do even half that again, I guess. Okay. 
Okay, it's erratic. I don't like that. Um, I had that earlier, but okay, this this looks better. So now it looks well, and let's press the home switch, and it's home again, and we can. Looks much better. I, I guess you can you have to tune it. Um, it's not that it has a nice UI, but I mean, if you got a PD LED, the function is already there. You already paid for it, and uh, you can just use three pins for a stepper or, or six pins for two steppers. So that's super nice. Um, just like a nice addition from Multimorphic. And um, yeah, so. Anything else we should adjust? No, I don't think so. Um, as you can see, it works. Does Multimorphic have any hardware that supports segment LEDs? Mm, good question. I think the the P Rock itself it supports like an alphanumeric display via the AUX port, but that's Probably not something you would use for new designs. Um, what you can do is like you can go with serial segment displays, so like even those RGB serial segment displays, and drive them with like the PD LED via serial LEDs. Or you can also parallelly connect them, right? So MPF has support for um, those yeah, for yeah for the for those outputs on the PD LED, and you can get segment displays either in RGB or one color, um, which are then connected to lights in MPF. So you define your normal lights, and then say, well, based on this lights, that's that's a segment with that many segments, and MPF will um, will map those. You got a Raspberry Pi three, yeah, yeah, right. You can even do like uh, you can drive the serial LEDs from the Raspberry Pi theoretically, and then use some serial uh, segment displays, for example. So there, are, if you go like the lights route, where you got lights and they turn into a segment display in MPF, but light seg segment display lights, light segment displays, I think, um, light seg displays. Yeah, that's that's here. So basically, you can define a segment display based on certain lights, and those will be just light in your machine. So if you look at the complete config here, there are a lot of lights defined, and they can be on any platform anywhere. And then based on that, you can have a segment display. So that that would work with with basically anything. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Fast Pinball has like a new segment display, which they just announced. I would say it's not, I think it's not really available yet, but some people have it already for as, as, as a test, or as a prototype, and they got like a standalone segment display now. Maybe that would also be something. The P Rock on Raspberry Pi 3, yeah. So to be honest, I would recommend like the Raspberry Pi 4 to get one of those. It's so much faster, you will have so much more fun with it. And that's not so not super expensive. Um otherwise probably better to use like a normal PC, a normal old PC, because that's faster than a Raspberry Pi 3. But um yeah, I mean you can you can use uh, like the Raspberry Pi three over um, um over how it's called uh, over Ethernet <clears throat> or even over USB. You can use your PC, connect the Raspberry Pi via USB, and use it for in and outputs. Um, and yeah, just use like some old laptop or some old desktop PC, like basically anything from the last fifteen years probably will work. Um, and so 
uh, that's what I also did initially in our machine. So we had like an old ThinkPad X21 or something. It's really old and it worked well. And at some point we replaced it with a new PC, but more because we wanted and that we had to. Um, you will send me a se seven digit 16 zero display with your order. Awesome. So like with serial LEDs or um, what kind of display is that? Um, yeah, I, I definitely need one because I really do not have any segment displays and I'm currently working on the segment display code. Um, again, because like Quinn and Anthony, they added a lot of stuff there and um, yeah, I'm refactoring a little bit and adding more features there. And uh, that will be awesome. I guess there might be some machines soon which have segment displays. At least there's like a lot of interest in those at the moment. Your color are awesome. So so you took like the WS2811 um, controllers and put LEDs on it. That's awesome. Yeah, I like it. Uh, totally looking forward to it. <laughs> it will be great. Mm, yeah. So basically, I showed you what I wanted to show you. Um, and yeah, like I got those nice stickers here. Um, no, take on. So if anybody wants those nice stickers, um, I can send you some. So I got like, I made a few hundred, I don't know. A thousand maybe even of those um so i got them and yeah i can i can mail them to you if you want some and they go into a letter like i don't know 10 10 go into a letter so if you want them they are like yeah this size i don't know five by three or something and i can send you some and if you want a lot of them can also send you this file. Um, yeah, so just check me now if, if you want some. Raspberry Pi. Yeah, I mean, sure, you can try the Raspberry Pi three, but just do not, do not, please do not, uh, please don't be disappointed if it's if it's really slow. I mean, it will work, but at least. For development, it won't be fun, to be honest. Better develop on some existing PC and also run it there. And then later, if you want to put it in a machine, then maybe take the Raspberry Pi 3 or replace it by then. <laughs> so, yeah. And really develop on, an, on, a, on a regular PC. That's, that's much more fun. And you can do like, this take something like this IDE with autocomplete here, for example, where it can it can autocomplete uh, the switches, for example, and so on, right? So that's that's what you want, um, and that's not possible on Raspberry Pi with uh, with VI, and maybe, but it's not fun. So this is what you want. Um, yeah, stick with your Windows 10 laptop. That's what I would recommend. Yeah, um, guys, if you got any questions, keep them coming. Um, I'm I'm really through, so I I hope I showed everything. I hope it makes sense how steppers work now, and you understand a little bit or you get a feeling where you could use them and where not and and where yeah and what to use so personally the if you just want a standalone stepper this Ololu tick it's it's a great controller um it's like 20 bucks i think um yeah 20 bucks at Pololu. Yeah, it's hard to beat that if you already got like the pd led use it um there's a lot, a lot more on the market, so but that's that's simple if you just want one. Um, and yeah, 
thanks guys for for joining thanks for uh, chatting with me um and as usual have a have a great evening um have a great weekend build some pinball hack some yeah yeah build some pinball improve something in mpf if you like send some pull requests and um yeah we will see each other soon hopefully next week i will probably do something about um about segment displays either on wednesday or on saturday not sure yet um but i do not have hardware so i will show like the, the virtual segment displays which uh, quinn built with all the new stuff which we added and um yeah then when i get the cobra pin stuff then i will definitely do a stream on that one and i will also do one on real hardware with the segment displays because that's that's cool stuff so until then have a great time and see you soon guys I mean, I mean, if you want to ask more, we can chat more. I, I got, I got time. It's not that's an issue. Sorry, I didn't want to kick you out. To be honest. <laughs> so uh, that's that's not it. I mean, usually we do an hour, and uh, um, I mean, <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I just didn't prepare anything else. So. Um, if you got anything cool that it actually replaces this this emoji with lull on the on the screen in mpf <laughs> nice that that works actually uh yeah i mean sure <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's the thing so <laughs> we're not like ten thousand people yet there will be 10,000 people in homebrew soon, <laughs> maybe, hopefully, and we will have a lot of new pinballs all around, but not yet. So I don't think that we have much more stuff, <laughs> but uh, thanks for thanks for all your, your comments. And yeah, I mean, we can, yeah, next time we can like, I mean, from time to time, like on last, I think, Saturday, I did like more like Q and A style stuff, and where we have like then more Q and A stuff, right? Where I can show more random stuff um, without like an agenda like today. Um, maybe I will like do that again in a few weeks, um, and then take some questions from from the forums where we. But like we often got very interesting questions where people like actually um they read the documentation they try it out and it still doesn't work because maybe something is missing or it's not obvious how to use it and then uh, we can go over some of those questions as well but um yeah that's i guess that's for next time so have a great have a great afternoon or evening depending on where you are and um yeah have fun with pinball See you soon.